purpose. It is time to bring on some of our favorite Power Rangers villains. All right. So first up, the Empress of Evil herself, Miss Barbara Goodson, a.k.a. Rita Repulsa. Oh, Hi, yes. guys. Hey. Hi, guys. Got oh, my mask on. on. And one of her favorite generals, Mr. Kerrigan Mayhan, the voice of Goldar. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is my first rodeo. Hi, guys. This is a gas. Good morning. Good morning. Coming up next from Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue, Miss Diane Salinger, the voice of Queen Banshira. Hello, darlings. How are you? Oh, man. My childhood is flaming right now. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next from Time Force, Power Rangers' first soap opera, Mr. Vernon Wells, a.k.a. Ramsey. Ah, uh, back again. <laughs> the queen pirate herself, yeah. Miss Hillary Shepard, aka Diva Tox. Hello, Team Diva Tox. Hello, all right, Master Org, Mr. Ilya Volok from Power Rangers Wild Force. I will destroy you. One of our hey, favorite, guys. favorite, Miss Astronomer, Miss Melody Perkins. Hi, hey everyone. I'm gonna save my voiceover for now. <laughs> <laughs> and the ooze master himself, the man that shocked fear in the world of children in the year 1995, including me, who had nightmares. Mr. Paul Freeman, aka Ivan Ooze. I smell teenagers. <laughs> How you guys doing today? Good. Uh, Wonderful. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Pretty good. Pretty good. Awesome. <laughs> it's so amazing. Hi, Vernon. We didn't say hello. How are you, Paul? Good, good. It's awesome. It's so amazing to get the chance to absolutely talk to you guys and for the people at home who are watching, because this is how we have to do Comic-Cons. And Wizard World has done an amazing job of making sure that the the art and style of Comic-Cons and people are still being able to interact with their favorite guests and and actors and all that and whatnot so the first thing i want to ask is how have you guys been doing at home you know we've been at home for a while Any, anybody how you guys been doing at home wonderfully yeah yeah uh, <laughs> i live at the top of the mountain in topanga canyon and uh my nearest neighbors are squirrels and rabbits and snakes and a toad underneath my stoop and I, 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 I'm thrilled. I feed them every day. It's, it's been great. This sounds like an episode of Snow White. I, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? How you guys been doing at home? I, well, I, I, I would say just like uh, Diane suggested, Topanga, I'm in Morro Bay. So I'm, I'm a half, about a thousand feet from the beach uh, with nobody on it at all. It's completely empty. And between that and the tennis courts down the way, which I am playing a lot of tennis and, um, and driving my convertible Jag down the highway one. I, I, I got no problems here. No complaints, no complaints at all. I'm in Santa Monica and that's a nice place to be too. Um, of course, any kind of sniffle, I wonder, you know, uh -oh, <laughs> you know, that's always in the, in the mix. And I've got my COVID-19, which is the, the weight gain from eating at home all the time and finding <laughs> new recipes. So it's on my butt. Anyway, that's enough. I think that is the thing that everybody has found. Everybody is being forced to find new recipes to cook. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> but I digress on that. We One of the good things about Power Rangers, and, and I am what you would call a Power Rangers super fan. I've been watching Power Rangers. I just turned 30. So I've, I'm just as old as Power Rangers, and it's been a part of my life. So to be able to do things like this, you could have never told me, the five-year-old, that I would be in this position. But you got Power Rangers. You got five teenagers with attitude, multicolor costumes. They would not be what they are without villains. So I want to ask you guys, why are villains important to Power Rangers? Well, as, a, as an actor, uh, villains are the most fun to play. They're the most exciting and they're the most memorable to watch in television, movies and theater. It's what you it's who you remember. 
I was, uh, the day I found out I got the part of Divatox, I found out I was pregnant. So I had to wear a corset and a cape and high heels. So I was pissed off anyway. So it was the great way to scream and yell at people and get paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> so you channeled that anger into your role. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I always say I got, uh, it's great for going through menopause. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I didn't know, nobody knew Goldar was going to be much of a part. So um, about six, 16 shows in, Tony Oliver, the producer called me and said, you better figure out what you're doing with that voice because um, he's, he's a big part. So that's why people ask me all the time, what, what's the bit with the voice? What, did somebody else do it originally? And I wasn't really committing to it because I only had you know, a couple lines, maybe if that, and then it got big. So I went down in my basement and figured out how to make this voice thing work for a recording of sometimes up to an hour. But that wasn't your question. I digress. Uh, villain, <laughs> villains, okay, are okay. villains are imperative. I mean, okay. in, in any in any story, really, there's, you know, usually there's the good and the bad, and that's, that creates the conflict. And you know, they're way more fun than playing good guys. I mean, way more fun. Yeah. Uh, I remember I, I was in uh, Japan at a, a convention and they were uh, interviewing me about Power Rangers. And I said, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm really one of the few lucky ones in Power Rangers because I got to kill a ranger and it's never happened before. And the guy doing the interview looked at me. And he How went, nice for you. Yeah. Went, <laughs> oh, we kill one a week. <laughs> Who wants to be the bad guy? Jeez. So looking at the pantheon that Power Rangers has spanned, this oh, it was 25 years. Who would have thought that it would still be going on from its original Mighty Morphin series Not all me. the way up now to Beast Morphers that just ended and coming out next with another one, the Dino Fury. Um, did you all think even after your position ended, that this would continue on as long as it had? No. No. No, 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 no. If somebody had pulled me aside when I was recording this and told me what is going on here. Right. Not, n n I, I, I want <laughs> drugs there on. I remember seeing the pilot with my family in New York at the time. My son was, I don't know, five. And um, my family looked at me kind of like sympathetically and said, well, we're, we're glad you had some work. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird. I did, nobody thought it was, the, the adults couldn't get it. But my son was like, you know, like they were. Well, I, Barbara, we weren't getting it at the time. We were no, going we weren't getting recording it, it and, and, and going on to the next job. Uh, we weren't paying any attention to this yeah. until, until the you know, uh, Hollywood 101 freeway was shut down. No, no cars were moving. Universal show. Show. And we realized, oh, oh, I think, I think this show's pretty big. Right, right. Yeah. And, and the toys, Bandai and the toys. <laughs> and my nephew and his best friend, Dave, my nephew is Clayton, his best friend, Dave, they had Power Rangers costumes and they had different colors, you know? It's, yeah. it's a huge thing. Yeah, I, I don't think I realized until I started doing conventions how amazing the Enterprise is. I had no idea when I was actually filming it what it was going to mean for my life and what it was going to signify. I mean, I feel like it's the gift that keeps on giving for me. You know, every time we get to interact with our fans, I'm like, ah, oh, just, it just fills me up. So... Thank you for doing stuff like this. Definitely, definitely. I know that was the same with me. I, I kept getting asked to go to conventions. And I'm like, no, I'm just going to sit there. No one knows who I am. I'm not, it's so embarrassing. So I tried one and uh, uh, I couldn't believe it. I mean, the lines out the door, like all the fans, I was shocked. It was probably like, I don't know, 15 years later or something or 10 that I finally went to a convention and I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I, I turned it down too in the beginning because it, it didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. I want to give a shout out to um, I, I, I want to give a shout out to Netflix too. Um, yeah, definitely, I, I, I really am. I, I, I want to. Thank huh? you. Yeah, I'd like 
Unshow. I want to write, write Netflix and and really, I mean, it, 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 the fact that the, this has been running from its inception and they've left it on. It's still can see the entire show from the beginning. That I think has a lot to do with why we're all still here. And and I, I hope they keep it going. I, I want to, I'm going to write them. The children. Also write them. The children. <laughs> You're, you're absolutely right, because when they said we're going to drop every last Power Rangers season on Netflix, and I'm like, you're going to do what? And they was like, no, we're gonna, Netflix made a big post, and all Power Rangers are now Netflix. So now I have five-year-old cousins that are watching the original series, and I'm sitting down with them just like this, like, yeah. So it's, it's and the, the toys, I knew Power Rangers was big when they brought toys to McDonald's, because every kid in my generation wanted a happy meal and you know that was the thing so i had my mom going all around the city <laughs> get every last power ranger toy and megazord they came out with the movie so that that's when things get pushed into other mediums and brands and now you're seeing sheets and you're seeing pillowcases and you're seeing bathroom cutties and all type of stuff what were you going to say sandwich Mary? bags sandwich bags lunch boxes <laughs> So that's I got so much of that stuff with my character on it. It's crazy. Well, I had to wait 20 years to get an action figure as Rita. So Same. We're, yeah. we're, glad, we're glad that you have one. Yay. Huh? Now, for- it's all unknown territory for me because uh, Power Rangers wasn't at all big in Europe before we did the movie. And right. it wasn't big after the movie either. Mm. And everything went very quiet. I didn't expect any further life from it. And then, I don't know, what, 15, 20 years later, suddenly there's this renaissance and we're all getting a wonderful pension from it. Well, more or less wonderful, you know. Uh, yes, it, a, a, a pension. <laughs> sort of and I want to throw out, too, to the fans <laughs> that Paul and Kerrigan never met until a Comic-Con. That's right, we, me either. We, yeah. we never, wow. we never saw each other, we never laid eyes on each other, we never spoke to each other throughout the entire process of- I was pretty much like that as Diva Talks because I was in my submarine by myself. I didn't mean, <laughs> you know, interact with anybody, it's, even on the TV show because I was shooting something else at the same time and I, I was pregnant and Carol played Diva Talks for a while. When I came back, I shot all my stuff like in two days, like, you know, shooting the camera this way, then that way. And I never interacted with anybody else. I mean, and, and, and what you're saying, Hillary, is exactly the same thing with the voiceover. We were passing ships in the night. Mm-hmm. I mean, That's you right. know, the friendships I made with the Power Rangers didn't really occur. We were, hi, how you doing? How you doing? You know, barely spoke same. to each other. You know, I mean, yeah, they're yeah. coming out of the booth and I'm going into the booth and see around. What was his <laughs> name again? You know, uh uh-uh. Yeah. And Paul, Paul, I met you in a limo to a convention. I knew you as your Raiders. And I had told you that Harrison Ford crashed down the block from me in the, you know, with his plane that that day. And that's how I we talked. And I then I knew I made the connection that you were Ivan Ooze and that we worked together on this. But I didn't think of you i mean i thought of you for raiders well, i guess we're, because we were filming in sydney that um you, they must have been using australian stand-ins for your characters obviously yes yeah. neither of you were there no we were the voices yeah, yeah. no 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 never saw hiding her hair in fact there's a story behind all of that but i don't think it's probably um politically correct to launch into uh, what happened with our characters, and we, but we fixed it with Hiam. We, he, he, he got it very clear that um, the the fans want to hear the original voices. There were yeah. there was a little hiccup in there. It was <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty. It was getting pretty ugly with uh, Barbara. And all, all, all of all of the voiceover. All of us. It was. Uh, but it worked out. Situation, but it would. But we fixed it. We fixed him. We fixed it. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Volok, I want to ask you a question. What yeah. do you think makes a great villain? Because the you were you were in a series where Power Rangers felt honestly like a soap opera. Like it was more dramatic. It was, you know, the the writing style was, you know, almost operatic in a sense. So what do you think makes a great villain? Uh, I think I approach it as from the actor's point of view. 
because you look always when you when you play a bad guy, you try to find what's good about him. Mm-hmm. You know, you you find you try to find a vulnerability. You try to find uh, kindness because it was already written as a bad guy. So if you play cliche of a bad guy, there is nowhere to go. So that's what's interesting for me. And if you you have the foundation, then the rest will take care of itself, you know, the, because that's why I think, you know, I was getting, by the way, I, I started realizing that this show is really big when I got, you know, a couple of letters, one from Spain, you know, when they were asking, Master Org, where is your headquarters? You know, so <laughs> I realized not necessarily from the paycheck that the show was big, but from the, the amount of, fan mail and all that stuff but you know coming back to the you know the playing um you know the, the bad guy it's uh, the danger always when you i guess and depending on the script how it's written but the danger is you know in playing a bad guy always can be in uh, approaching it as a just uh typical stereotypical you know bad guy but you have to look for and you know that particular writing for that season had that you know the, the backstory of the the master org when uh, he was a human and that also that helped but overall it, w- it was a great experience i've never had to do anything like that even since then that was pre- that, that that character was pretty unique definitely definitely same question for miss melody oh what- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was multitasking. I'm so sorry. Um, what was the question? What, what was it what like to you, be? <laughs> what do you think makes a great villain? Because you had a you had a significant part. Um, and just like Mr. Volok just said, the human aspect, you know, of course, your brother in the series was the Red Ranger and he was always trying to get tap into you and be like, no, you're my sister. You're my, after a while they got ag- aggravated to me but as a child. It's like, okay, we, we know that's a, your sister. What are you going to do about it? But for you, what do you think makes a great question? A great villain. I'm sorry. Well, I feel like when I first started playing Astronomer, I was just trying to keep up. Like that was my main goal was just to, to, to be able to act through the day. <laughs> I feel like I had really big shoes to fill with Hillary, Diva Talks, Rita. It was like, oh, my God. And my first scene was with all of these monsters and villains. And it was so intimidating. Um, But I would say in hindsight, it takes sort of internal conflict, maybe like something else happening. I don't know that you kind of have to have your angle, I think. But um, for Astronema, it was definitely the choice between being good and evil. And being able to see that through in the following season was just awesome. So. Absolutely. We definitely want to thank Jeffrey Chim for that question. Um, Daniel oh, Walt- Walters wants to ask, how has your reaction been to fans? I know some of you answered this already. Been to fans still being so drawn to and fans of some of the villainous roles that you played? Because the show is called Power Rangers, not villains. Villains mm-hmm. are a part of the Power Rangers. So like you all were saying, like, people love the villains like miss miss shepherd said i didn't know people knew who i was or still cared about my character you'd be more shocked than surprised that some people really worship the villains more than you know the power ranger so for some of you guys how has that reaction been great (laughs) (laughs) well it's why we're still all here isn't it because uh, (laughs) you know the people really responded to whatever magic it was we were conjuring up all those years ago. Definitely, I definitely, definitely. Right. Oh, well so, said. You're all much more recent than I am. But, uh... Absolutely. Another thing I, I get some to... crazy questions like, um, how do you get the zo- the uh, the magic wand back? Right. You know, it's like the they're so still so like in the the fantasy of it. It's like. I said, uh, you know, that's uh, that's how it's written. You know, that's the script. <laughs> I, I get it back. <laughs> well, but they, I, when I was playing Divatox, I, I had no, I just 
was completely thrilled. I didn't feel like I was evil at all. Like a real evil person wouldn't feel that way. You know, you know, you don't, you just think you're doing the greatest thing. And I just let my ego go wild. And I didn't even think about that. But then when uh, fans, I felt really bad when little kids would come up to me and go, why were you so mean? Why did you just wait? Oh, <laughs> yeah, the nightmares that I gave that I've been told over the years, the, the horrible, horrible nightmares that I was responsible for. And I'm sure I'm responsible for, you know, uh, certain kids going into therapy over over <laughs> absolutely i'm not gonna lie to you but i i'd like to believe i brought more joy that that's what seems to be the the overall um attitude at the at the tables you know um, yeah. and it's for me to this moment still surreal i mean it's it's as surreal for us i think sometimes as it is for you know when their hands are you know, I mean, they're nervous, and 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 I, and and I understand that, and and I really enjoy um, being at one with the fan, getting settling them down, and and having fun, and telling them stories, and I see that the joy that comes from that for me is is every bit as much as it is for them. Yeah, I, I can say to Miss Barbara, Mister Kerrigan. I've seen you guys in Pensacola at, at a convention. I remember you that. You know they are in the room because you can hear their it's character. So damn loud. So obnoxious. from the table, you can, hear, <laughs> you can walk in the other side of the the actors' room and you can hear Rita and Goldar from the other side of the room. And he's like, "I'm going that way. I'm going to see what's going on over I there." I remember George TK saying. Would you shut that woman up? <laughs> I can't hear, and it was embarrassing. But I apologized. I had to do what yeah, I have to do. I have had a lot of fun together at the cons. Yeah, uh, the fans love it. The fans. I love did it. have a, a little kid back in early days cry, and <laughs> I then I realized that that voice I have to monitor that voice, and I met him like twenty years later. He oh, said, wow. "You made me cry," and I remember it was it was. At a target, it was another kind of, um, I don't know what we were doing. We were doing a fundraiser. Uh, fundraiser, a yeah. A children's, you know, one of those really, really good and fundraiser things. So I, yeah, for Make-A-Wish, I think it was. Yeah, Make-A-Wish, yeah. And Robert was there and the three of us yeah. were there doing our thing. You made him cry he told me, he, I made him cry and then uh, I apologized and, and I did the voice and he pretended to cry again. Yeah. It was really <laughs> cute. I struggle a little with with the writing sometimes with Goldar. Uh, you know, I, I conjured every emotion I possibly could with what had a tendency to be a very one note character. So I brought in everything I could, frustration, anger, sadness, you know, <laughs> what horrible childhood Goldar, I, me, I must have had and, and, and wanting so much to try to please her but then being frustrated. So I think because I maybe brought in some, some, I brought in some extra elements as opposed to just rah, 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 because he could really be, be almost, it's like, you know, what, what do you do with this guy? And Magna Defender juxtaposed was a, was a multi-note uh, anti-hero uh, uh, and a much, much more demanding and fun and beautifully written role. It was only nine episodes, maybe eleven. Um, but 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 it was one of the some of the best. Lost Galaxy arc with Magna Defender before I handed it over to Mike, the you know the on camera Magna Defender. But that was some serious writing, and I I didn't just walk in. Uh, you, you know, jump in behind the mic as I did with Goldar. You know, there wasn't a lot. I mean, it, I, you know, it was, I wouldn't say I walked through it, but it was not as demanding as Magna by any stretch. I mean, we really took some time to, to study this, the screen and what's happening and, and taking a, a minute with the script. And uh, anyway, that was one of the most fun voiceover and demanding voiceover roles I ever did, which he's not anywhere near as famous as Goldar, but but it's amazing the amount of people that come up to the table and, and can't believe I was Magna because they could not have been more different. I mean, completely, you know, n nothing to do with each other in in uh, uh, character or, or, or vocally. 
I mean, Magna kind of was a Clint Eastwood base. Anyway, just a little sidebars. Mr. Vernon, um, you played in another great series. You were Rancic. Um, and we've been one of the things we've talked about is that he, that Mr. Volok brought up was that human to villain interaction and how that parallels itself. So what was it like being the character of Rancic and looking at his beginning and all the way to his end? I, I was ex exceptionally lucky because, um, number one, we had, once again, as Carrigan said, we had great writing on that series. Um, and it got better when they figured out that I could actually act. So um, they started making my life miserable. But I think I had an advantage with the fact that the character really wasn't in the series when it was started. It was actually my daughter was the villain. And they decided to go in another direction and put a male villain in. And that's where my character came from. But they gave me this amazing relationship with my daughter so the character was more human than he was evil and so the kids sort of come into that but of course he had his moments and um it became this whole thing between uh, me and the pink ranger i mean every time i saw her, i kicked her butt it was kind of fun uh through the whole series so i think from the perspective of putting a villain together i i think in that series he was someone who came here to get away from where he was which was the power rangers always foiling everything he wanted to do to try to become uh master of the universe if you want to put it that way right, and right. he wasn't out there being mean and rotten he let all of his his um monsters go and do that he was more human than anything i mean his relationship with his daughter his relationship with the rangers when he saw them and the funny thing is that at the end when they turned me good they had a big show that they did over in new zealand a big film which had um, some of the villains and some of the and i kind of got in contact with them and said are you going to take me over for it they said well no you're not a villain you're a good guy now Ruined my whole bloody career. <laughs> I wanted to be in the good guy. It's like, ah, oh, come yeah. on, give me a break here. Yeah, yeah, I stopped working when when Rita became good. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> There's a lot of that. Yeah, I became good for a second. Yeah, and then I was gone. <laughs> I to keep that continuity uh -huh. going. We got a question from Darth Plagueis the Wise. Um, said, what do you consider the most ridiculous or funniest stunt or line that you had to deliver. I I already know this this is going to be a good question because you guys had some of the craziest lines and things that you had to say and even some of the catchphrases that you guys had. Anybody, what what were some of the favorite lines or things that you had to do? Oh, uh, well for me, I it was great because when I I first did the movie, the second movie and they just let me go wild. Um I had been in the groundlings doing comedy improv and all that. And they just let me say whatever came to my head. And I got to talk to the prop department. I said, I want to make her really vain. These things were not in the script. So like make me some makeup stuff. And I want to read like Space Vogue. And, you know, I think that's got cut out. But um, so that was just thrilling for me because I, whatever came into my head, I would just let it fly. And one of them was Viva La Diva, which um, became like a huge thing. And now there's some... Um, housewife from New York who just wrote a song called Viva La Diva. I'm going to sue her. <laughs> Anybody else? I think called I feel like we're all that. very familiar with saying destroy them. Like I think yeah, I said absolutely. destroy them probably <laughs> 400 times. <laughs> Same. Yeah, I loved it. That's right. I like <laughs> calling Robert a, a, what was it, a radiator face or something, you know, <laughs> you know, shut up, you know, whatever, uh, some car part. And also, uh, you know, <laughs> I, such a headache was a was a good one. Right. right, uh, right. There was so. Oh, many. so you think she's pretty cute too? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and I said that to Paul <laughs> about the Pink Ranger. Barbara, I, I love that I woke up. you up. Get a long distance call. Oh, that I'm was like, great. Sorry about the time change. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, the the, the phone call between us. I yeah, love that. that. <laughs> I also got paid for a little part, and that was a great thing, too. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think mine was when we did the episode with my daughter was in love with the Green Ranger. 
and I spent the whole episode going, don't touch the Green Ranger. <laughs> the whole episode. It was every time something, don't touch the Green Ranger. But my daughter was in love with him. It was like, ah, oh, good God. Mr. Volat, what was one of your favorite lines? That you wow, yeah, that, that is, I will destroy you. <laughs> the <That's one. laughs> yeah. Now, now, when it comes to iconic lines for me, it, uh -oh. it Mr. Thanks. Freeman, man, the Power Rangers, where's my autograph book? Or all oh, the things I've missed, the French Inquisition, the whole just phrasing and line throughout that movie when you were destroying the um, the command center. That 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 was a you you. You set the tone in a sense um, when it came to phrases because you were hilarious. You were supposed to be a villain, but you were hilarious that whole movie. It was just all the quips and the the quick wittedness of it all. What what was some of your favorite lines? Well, thanks for saying that, but I can't take any credit for it. It was the script, and the script, Ivan's part was incredibly funny and and very well written. In fact, the first draft I got, which uh, I had to. I tape an audition in London and send it to uh, Australia um, was even funnier because he was a real shapeshifter. At one point, he became a woman. Another point, he became black. And whatever you liked, he could he could do it. And finally, I think that just became too complicated to include in the movie, and it was cut down a bit, pared down. But a lot of those funny lines were still there, so I can't take any credit for that. I take a little credit for the fact that these allowed me to go in any direction I want. I really didn't have any anybody controlling it. It was rather like Hillary said, as long as you provided something, they were very happy to go along with it. Yeah, I agree. That was great. I love that. And a lot of stuff, of course, not being American, not ha ever having seen the Power Rangers, I didn't understand half the gags anyway. So I had to sort of have some <laughs> attitude and make it up. I mean, I'd never seen the Brady Bunch reunion. Uh <laughs> you know what he meant? So what about you? About having a, when I got out of the egg, having a Charlie horse, I had to be told what that was, you know. <laughs> Foreigner. Where did, the pig, where, where did the pig come from? I, I never, all these years, I have no idea. Where, where that, was an, that was an added villain for the, I think just for the movie, because he was never in any other thing outside no. of the movie or a TV show. Yeah, I wish they would have kept the others. Never understood that and why uh, the other two uh, uh, were not Balkan, uh, not Balkan Skull. Um, no, uh, my guys, Squat and uh, Babu, Squat and Babu. Yeah, definitely. Miss Diane, do you have any famous lines that you can remember? <laughs> my son, my son. <laughs> I, I was obsessed with my son. That, right. That's about it. I wanted to add something to what Elia had talked about about villains. I think that. Two things, actually. Um, the thing about villains is that I, I loved what Ilya said because George R. R. Martin from Game of Thrones, he, I've been reading his interviews because I'm writing a novel, and he said, you know, that he wanted to make sure that every character in Game of Thrones was, was good and bad. Everybody is gray, varying shades of gray. And I think that's true that you have to find, and other people were saying too about villains, that you have to find what's good in them, you know, what you love. Hitler did not think of himself as a villain. Right. He thought he was saving Germany, you know? That's what he thought. He thought he was saving Germany. He was a crusader. Well, as, as, as well as many other people. Yes, I, I think. Yeah, oh, yeah, you yeah. shall. Uh, those who shall not be named. Yeah. yeah. And and the other thing is, is that with villains, um, I, I, you know, they've had their power taken away and they want to get their power back. I think that's that that seems I, I know that that's how I approach villains and I play a lot of villains. They're my favorite roles. And it's always, you know, how how do I get I, Diane, get my power back in this situation? It's, a, it's usually a person with arrested development, narcissism, uh, some, some childhood trauma. trauma. And, and you have to bring that into your character. I mean, Rita started off screaming, and she does scream. But then when, when Lord Zed showed up, the kids, uh, the parents thought he was a little too um, edgy and dark. 
And they brought Rita back, which was great. And then we played on the comedy. It was sort of Lucy and Ricky from I Love Lucy. Uh, You know, Zaddy! You know, so there was not just the dark, I want to conquer the world. She was a a child, basically, that needed, you know, to have things, have things. I got to have, I got to, you know, consume. And I will say that was a big change for somebody watching the show at that time. From it, it got it, and I went back and watched like a year or two. Ago. I was like, "Wait, this was dark. This was not right." In the like, yeah, it, 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 it got a little too dark and not as entertain in a way not so good for kids, you know. Definitely. Now, I love doing the playoff with Robert. I love having that kind of banter with him. And, there was and a strange I got a darkness to- about the movie too, wasn't there? In that. Um, Ivan was trying at one point to do a sort of Pied Piper of Hamlin thing yeah. and just separate all the kids from the parents. And I think the, the, the end of the plot was that he was going to drive all the parents over a cliff, yeah. which was pretty nasty, really. That was <laughs> maybe a little bit. <laughs> hypnotize, hypnotize exactly. the and they're literally walking in single file, mass crowd, walking up. I'm like, what is going, what is going on here? Especially at five years old, like, this not, is this not good. This is not it's good. funny if you think, <laughs> if you think back at the time that the series came in for an enormous amount of criticism at the time from the sort of um, martial arts thing. Mm-hmm. Exactly. The thing about kicking yeah. particularly was picked on by the media saying it's very dangerous and it's teaching children to be aggressive and violent. Which was wasn't actually... Ignoring the fact that, you know, I, I, what I was trying to do was separate children from their parents and kill all the parents. Okay, okay. <laughs> My son's preschool would not let me give as a gift for the auction the the toys that I had been given to give to the school because wow. the head of the school believed that it was a it was a dangerous show at, with with violence. And I kept saying the kids are fighting the putties. They're not fighting each other. My son would have all these parties and the kids would be dressed as Power Rangers, kicking the air because they weren't fighting the other Power Rangers. Nobody wanted to be a putty. So they were, and I kept arguing, but she wouldn't take the toys for the auction, which was It, 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 it became a point. I mean, it's good versus evil. We can go back and look at, you know, Warner Brothers cartoons from when we were growing up. Right. You know, and, and, and I never once... I never once, I always came back losing. I was always the loser. The Power Rangers always, yeah. Yeah. you know, beat me. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, um, this is where this politically correct crap really can get stupid. Definitely. Yeah. I remember when I was like six months pregnant when we shot that huge scene where we, we were all going to fight. And I was really worried. And they're like, you're not going to fight. Don't worry about it. You're just going to stand there and yell. You know, I didn't ever hit anybody or kick anyone. I just screamed a lot, you know, and, and ordered people about, but it was always against, you know, like you said, putties or whatever. It wasn't like yeah, it wasn't each other. Yeah. You know, yeah. There's, a, there's a great book, um, the uses of, I think it's called the uses, it's uh, uh, Bettelheim about the uses of fairy tales. And, you know, in it, he talks about why it's important to have the villains is because children have a lot of obstacles to overcome and they have a lot of nightmares and it's showing how the hero overcomes the villains because they have to do this on an unconscious and uh, and also in the physical world too that kids have a lot to contend with and and it's important to show how they do that, you know, how you overcome a villain, because that's what they have to do. We got a, we got a question here for Miss Melody. Um, yeah. You are a ranger and a villain too. Which do you prefer? Oh, definitely yeah. the villain. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Corone was so much who I am. I mean, it was just kind of like, I mean, I hate to say it, it's like bad acting, but I was just playing myself pretty much like walking into work and like doing me. But as astronomer, that was a huge stretch. So way more fun, way more crazy. And that, and that leads me to another question that I had. If you all play villains, but if you could be a Power Ranger, what color would you be? Black. 
Okay, okay. Well, I'd have to be purple. <laughs> there, there is a purple ranger. There is a purple ranger. I'd be blue. Red. Purple or red? Purple I think red. I'd say gold. Okay, okay. Uh, I'd uh, be a red. Oh. <laughs> that does exist in, in Japan. So just oh, to let you know that exists. That's so cool. <laughs> it's so funny because it's the opposite with me with Melody. Whenever I have to play like a good normal character, it's so hard for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's hard too. It's uh yeah. The furthest <laughs> thing don't, don't don't put yourself down, Melody. That's hard to be even to be well, like a self dress yourself. I'm way better at you know being characters. Yeah. Mr. Volat, what color would you be? I would probably be red because I'm from, from the former Soviet Union. <laughs> <laughs> we got another question from Robosaurus Rex who says, hello all, any word what happened to your original villain or monster costumes? And are there any pieces that you kept as a memento? This question is for everybody except for Kerrigan because we see his whole suit <laughs> in the background. Oh, that's actually, <laughs> uh, that was, uh, that's, a, that's not the original. It's not? Okay. No, okay. no, it is not. That was uh, the guy who's my friend. Um, he had it built in Indonesia and he played Goldar with, in the videos that I shot, you know, the Goldar right. and me videos um, that you can see on my YouTube. Um, ampersand, not, not the and, A-N-D, but Goldar and me. And he dressed up in that thing. And then he finally decided enough was enough. I'm done. I'm not doing it anymore. And I, and I bought it from him. So the original head I saw at Power Morphicon in glass. I never laid eyes on it. Pretty For cool. those that don't know, I didn't wear the costume. I was the voice of Rita, all the Ritas. But I did wear it once <laughs> when they were deciding whether to go with Rita as a uh, me fully or they ended up going with a um with uh ah! carla parrot yeah which was a smart move and i wore it once it was so damn heavy i'm so glad i only had it on once and there's no way i'm going to get a part of that but maybe carla has something from it but i don't think she does either i think she she's such a talented a uh, sewer and costumer herself. I, she made her own costume of Rita's costume. Wow. Uh, so, I have the, um, I have one of the, oh, heads, Vern, rather um, like you, Vernon's head. Vernon's, Vernon's head. Vernon's head. Um, but um, my, my, I had a, um, I had a, um, I seem to be repeating. Is I there seem to be repeating. Wrong? Is there something wrong? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Vernon, yeah. Anyway, I that have um, is... one of the original false heads that they made the head from. And for a time, I kept a couple of the skin pieces. There were about five separate pieces making up the face. And for some reason, I think I kept the last one for a while, a couple of the patches. But over the years, it disintegrated. So one of these plaster heads is lying around here somewhere. And every now and then we say, we must find that. I've got a couple of them from other movies as well. So somewhere in this house, there are some things of me, but I've no idea where. Everybody's bringing out the oh, toys. Of the <laughs> <laughs> but it was, there's another one that a fan has that I wore in the movie. This was my practice mask. It was much more malleable. And um, there's a stiffer one that someone else has. But um, I went years later to um, the special effects place and they had it on their shelf. And I was like, <laughs> can I have it? So um, I was really glad to get that. But at the time, I didn't get anything. Now, Mr. Freeman said something that got, got me thinking. Power Rangers, they just put on this, the actors, they put on these, or the stunt people, they put on this, the skin-tight costumes and the spandex. But for the people who played live parts, the makeup, how was the makeup? I'm going to start with Miss Melody. Oh, my gosh. I remember showing up. I think it was my earliest call time was probably 4 a.m., or something like that, which at the time was undoable. It was crazy. Um, it was hard. I feel like the makeup and then the the hair when you're fighting, it's like getting caught in your, it's just a whole operation. I was just thinking about that because astronomer's hair was just, it was, it was a lot. There was a lot going on. And the costume was, you know, it was just, it wasn't comfortable, but it was, uh, it was cool. <laughs> 
Mr. Volok, what about you? Because you yeah. elaborate well, costume. Yeah. I had, uh, you know, I had a third eye. <laughs> but, you know, they actually, they actually hired me because I, in reality, I had a third eye. I mean, I got rid of it. <laughs> You know, I, I just went on the right diet and I uh, got rid of it. Um, <laughs> what no. is that, carrots? <laughs> yeah. So, the, no, the, 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 the makeup was, uh, you, know, a, you know, we would get there probably like 5 a.m. F- for me. And it would take, depending, you know, at least an hour to get in. And it's, um, but it wasn't bad. I remember the, when they switched my wig, to a longer hair, and you know we were, we were shooting on uh, at the st- on the stage in Valencia, and I remember this feeling because the the suit is very heavy and um, mm-hmm. made out of sway. I started suffocating. I remember that was like I wanted to I wanted to take off that <laughs> the whole headgear, but you before I was able to, but when they put the new one with the long hair, I I couldn't take it off because it was the way it was fixed. So it was. That was pretty, you know, difficult. And I remember we were shooting in Palmdale with like 105 degrees and in all, in all that gear. That was uh, also not easy. But it's a great, great memory, though, you know. Definitely. Yeah. Bye. Did, we got our um, first makeup session in Sydney when the guy, I've forgotten his name, Warren, was, was trying the makeup on, it took seven and a half hours to put it on the first oh. time. So that was all day. We got it down to four and a half hours. So, wow. Molly, I beat you, I'm afraid. I had to be in the chair at 3.30 every morning. Oh, so wow. they could start at eight. And then an hour and a half at the end of the day when the whole thing was taken off. That was helpful. You wear it home? At the end of the day, a few cigarettes and a long straw going into a barrel of Guinness down by the side. (laughs) I had no idea. I would just come in and I played a puppet. I had no idea that you guys had this kind of uh, stress with all this makeup. It was just so separate from everything. Wow. The craziest thing with me is I have a mask that's covering, you know, half of my face, but they would do full makeup on me. Even my eye that was underneath the mask, they would always black it out. And I always had glitter to the point that I think two years after I did the part, I'd still find like pieces of glitter. (laughs) And my baby was always covered in glitter because I was always breastfeeding her, carrying her to the set. She just had glitter everywhere. There was just no way to, (laughs) I think she still has some. (laughs) Yeah, I, I was in at about uh, five, I think. But mine, when I when I when they first started doing my makeup, it took about two and a half, nearly three hours. By the end of the series, they had it down to twenty-seven minutes. So <laughs> I could Good. get me in and get me out. And but the worst thing was the costume. It weighed about a hundred pound. It was, and it had twenty-five different wigs on it that had to be done up and. It took two people to put it on me, and then it took two people to get it off so I could go to the toilet. And boy, they hated me because I guess they don't, wow. they don't villains have another outfit. Do I have a lounge set, pajamas, something? You know, <laughs> we'll wear the same outfit every day, morning, night. So yep. now, now we have an understanding of why there were not a. You didn't see Rancic run a lot. The Power Rangers just came to him, and he just swung the sword, standing in one place. <laughs> <laughs> Vernon, did yeah. you get hurt in that costume? Uh, yeah, uh, the first day I uh, dislocated my knee. Yeah. And I wasn't uh, walking around doing anything for about the first two episodes. I was uh, very immobile. Oh. Most that, definitely. It's fine. I figured out, don't jump, dumbass. It hurts. The makeup and the costumes, my hat's off to you all. I, I, my claustrophobia would not... I mean, I really would not be able to do do any of that. I couldn't do it. Oh, and the poor stunt people. I remember looking out, we were in Valencia, it was like 105 and I'm addressing the troops. And then I just see that like five people just faint, you know? <laughs> yeah, it was so hot there. I was like, man down, man down. Yeah, that was really hard for them. Uh, 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 microphone, please. 
<laughs> we want to make sure that you that the fans at home don't forget that are watching on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube that you still have time to purchase those additional paid exclusive experiences like one-on-one private chats, autographs, and custom video recorded messages at wizardworldvirtual.com. Uh, we want to I want to end asking each of you because at the end of the day, you guys are still professionals, you guys are still actors, and you have done more than Power Rangers. Uh, one by one, what is something that you're working on now, and where can we find you on social media? <clears throat> I'm going to start with Miss Barbara. Okay, well, I just finished something, a video game called Bug Snacks. I play Clumby, Clumbernut, and that's one of the games. I'm doing a lot of other games. I, I just did a DreamWorks movie um, playing mm-hmm. in a woman, um, a voice, me, voice. Uh, that will be out next year called Bad Guys um, with uh, some wonderful actors. Uh, and Disgaea, another character from um, a video game. Lots of video games and should know all of my work. I've been lucky. I've been remotely working a lot in my closet. That's doing a lot, a lot of voice work. Um <laughs> Yeah. So there's that. There's another one that I can't remember. Disguise. Blah, 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 blah. Some Disney. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, Clone Clone Wars. I did. I did Mother Talzin again yes, yes. for something else recently. I did not know that. Uh, oh, Legos. Yeah. You didn't know I was her. Yeah. There's a bunch. There's a bunch. So hey. um, still doing them. Uh, they, they keep showing up after like 20 years. Oh, World of Warcraft. Lady Vosh. I, I've just re, uh, redone her for uh, Blizzard. So um, I'm, I'm lucky. I feel very, very blessed that I'm still working in my closet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mr. Kerrigan, what are you working on right now? I got, um, I'm trying to find another tennis partner so I can play more tennis. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have two screenplays that were very, um, One's a big, big, big monster tent pole um, based on a MotoGP platform, a coming of age story. And um, great script. And thank you. And, uh, and, uh, and, a, and, a, and a depression era family film uh, that is uh, a, a very decent bu- budget and female uh, narrative uh, driven. Um, and I'm. Um, the screen that's called Screenland, and 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 it was right on top of getting into the right hands, and this thing hit, and everything stopped. So I'm kind of on. That's got to be made. Pins and needles right now, hoping that we get out of this mess because I I think Screenland will be made, and um, as much as I would like not to necessarily see it on Hallmark. Um, I, I think Hallmark would grab it right now, but I hate to see the commercials. You know, naturally, I want to see it on the big screen, but I think it's probably realistically a streaming film. So, you know, I go back into these scripts every so often and, and you know, you know, you, you make sure they're as tight as you think they are. And I still will make little tweaks. It gets crazy. And then I have a TV show that I wrote, uh, and 10 episodes and that's all stopped too. So I'm just, you know, biding my time. Oh, and I got a regular role on the Alvin and the Chipmunk show on Nickelodeon or recurring, I should say, uh, coach Dobkins. So I go down to Montecito to, to shoot that with Janice, Janice and Ross Bagdasarian actually make that, that entire cartoon out of their lovely, 30,000 square foot mansion uh, in Montecito. The only thing, the only thing that's out that, that is um, done out of, out of house is, uh, is, is the animation itself out of India, but the entire show is made in that house. Absolutely. Miss Diane, what are you working on right now? Earlier you said you were writing a novel. I am, I am, but I'm also, I'm, I'm so happy. I just got this two days ago. Um, I'm going to be doing a movie called Things Like This, which is a gay rom-com yeah. in, in New York City with oh, Eric Roberts and Diane Cannon. 
Wow. And um, but at the, the novel I'm writing, I describe it as uh, modern day meets Game of Thrones. And it's about Joan of Arc. Oh, sweet. And I go to France three months at a time to do research. So oh, I, 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 oh. I can't wait to go back. Nice. nice. Mr. Vernon Thank Wales, you. what are you working on currently? My manager just signed three films yesterday. Oh, that's great. Um, I'm doing a thing called, the reason I was late this morning, which they don't know, but you do, was because I was doing a table read for Southern Hard, which is a film I'm doing, which is very apropos to uh, it's a white man and a black woman trapped in a cave. And he has treated her like crap all her life and doesn't realize he's in there with her until they confront each other, which is kind of apropos for what's going on today. And then because I can't help myself, Two days ago, <clears throat> this arrived in the mail, Best Actor Award for a film I did called uh, Fear of the Woods. Nice. What's the movie Woo! called? Um, so things are going, I can't complain. I have worked more since the pandemic. I've done six <laughs> films since the pandemic started. Um, it's ridiculous. Vernon, what's the movie called that you got the award for? Oh, it's called Fear of the Woods. Fear of the Woods? Fear of the Woods. It's actually, um, a, a guy I worked with on another film, a director, he's Swedish. He rang me up and said, I'm trying to put together this um, horror film that's actually set in Alaska, but I want to shoot it in Sweden because it's in the snow. And I want you to come over and do it. But we can't do the whole film. We're only doing the first 20 minutes is what you're in because you get killed by the protagonist, which is a 10 foot Kodiak bear. And mm -hmm. that was more as a um, proof of concept because of the bear and the whole bit. And uh, I went over and we shot this uh, piece and they did the whole thing. When they edited it and put the special effects on, it turned out to be so good. They put it into 37 festivals. They've so far won nine best actor, 12 best film, and I'm one oh. of the best actor awards for it. So. Can we see it somewhere? It's online. It's on, um, if you just put in uh, Fear of the Woods, um, it'll come up. It's online. Okay, and, uh, okay. good to know. It's, 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 the, the photography and everything in it is brilliant. The two guys that I work with, a young man that plays my son, uh, an older gentleman that plays my brother, there's only three of us in the film, are absolutely unbelievable actors. They're Swedish and absolutely brilliant. And the cinematography, the cinematographers won best uh, cinematographer five years in a row. Um, and he's just absolutely, the cinematography is stunning. It's all shot. You know, I've spent four days freezing off parts of my body that I thought maybe I wanted to use again someday. It was cold. <laughs> Minus degrees. It was, and I was being dragged around in the snow. It was. Oh. But, I have to get a plug. I'm running out of battery. <laughs> I'm, I, I, I'm just yeah, fortunate. I'm not just fortunate. I'm just blessed that I keep working um i that's the way it is i guess sometimes and i'm gonna take it while i can get it god damn it and it's a lot of it's from home i'm doing enough i've done one film from home i've been asked to do a film called electric man which i'll be shooting all of my scene exactly like i'm talking to you onto my computer except i'll have the director on another computer um on zoom telling me what to do wow that's cool it's just amazing how they they adapt, you know, like the film industry and the filmmakers have adapted to the fact that they can't have big sets with lots of people on them. They've adapted to another way and getting some really good stuff out there. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Miss Hil Miss Hillary Shepard, what are you working on right now? Hey, um, well, I, I have a movie. I have a bunch of movies on Lifetime right now. One is called A Husband for Christmas. It was just on. It's going to be on, I think, all till Christmas. And then I have a series called The Wrong Babysitter, The Wrong Neighbor, The Wrong. I just shot another one of those. And there's about 10 
that those or more that I'm in with Eric Roberts and uh, Vivica Fox. And we play all different sorts of parts. It's and but it's always a different story too. So that's been really fun. <clears throat> and then um, my best friend, who is Daryl Hannah, who um, was you know I, she still is an actress. She was in Splash and Kill Bill. She and I um, developed this uh, TV show based on my mother. My mother was named Judy, and it's called Judaisms. And um, it was just about to go when the pandemic hit. But it, so now we just have a little Instagram until that gets going. Uh, Peter Farrelly, who did, uh, you know, the Dumb, Dumb and Dumber, uh, he's um, he's helping us with it. And uh, he's been really great. So uh, my inst that Instagram is called Judaism's dot no offense. So if you just want to get a little taste of it, but we'll have a full blown um, TV show soon. I hope I don't know when we wrote all the episodes and everything. So we'll see what wow. happens. Good for you. Mr. Volok, what we can what can we expect from you going on right now? Uh, well, I've been I've been uh, doing a couple of uh, you know the voice uh, jobs. One is for uh, uh, the Boondocks, it's uh, animation, and uh, for some reason they offered me to play a uh, role of Vladimir Putin. They, pro they probably got inspired by Master Org. I don't I don't know. Um, and um, then the, another one, it's from Netflix, it's called uh, Agent King, that I'm about to do. And also, oh, yeah. And th there is also, I've been doing it ongoing. There's a, a video game, Payday, Payday 2. So there's that, you know, that, it's also the voice uh, thing. And on screen, I'm about to do the it's an independent film. It's uh, scheduled to go up in uh, December. Um, it's called the ban Balloon Animal. So, this, you know, and I feel like right now it's just started opening up with all the, you know, the industry little by little. So there's there's been several you know, request to do a self tape for like TV, you know, TV shows and all that stuff. So I think it feels like it's coming back just for the amount of the, you know, the additions that are coming up. So anyway, but you know, this, this industry, as we all know, unpredictable. So you could be busy where any, nobody else is busy or the vice versa, or there is no rhyme reason i guess to this um anyway but besides that for me it's uh, it's always staying creative and uh you know I work, i'm working on a couple of um you know the actually on two theater projects theater plays and when it's all you know done with the the you know the, the corona and all you know we're gonna we're gonna put up a couple of plays as well so anyway. are you writing them are you writing them? Uh, actually, you? actually, one we it's a co-written with uh, the playwright William Manos, who we we worked together on my one-man show a couple of years ago. So, you know, we co-wrote this two-character play, you know, me and another for another African American actor. So that's that'll be interesting. We actually rehearse. We actually meeting and reading, and um, you know, we we're hoping to put it up sometime in maybe in, in May or June where, you know, because right now Broadway, I think they go, they adjust to Broadway as far as the, you know, theater concerns. So Broadway is shut down until officially until end of May or end of April. So all the theater is shut down uh, anyway. So, but the, the work never stops. I mean, it's, you know, creative work, you know, we, you know, besides the paying, besides the paying gigs, you know, which are thankfully, you know, coming, uh, but also, you know, for me, I always, I always work on something, uh, you know, creative. Or we, you know, we, we actually me, me and um, you know, the, uh, a friend of mine from the actor studio, we've been working on this play, Red. I don't know by by um, David Logan, I believe. Yeah, the, the, it's about the, you know, painter Rothko. Anyway, so we're working on that and we're filming that just as an experiment. So anyway, so creative.
project, you know, creative process never stops for for me. Absolutely. Anyway. Ms. I, I just forgot something. I just want to quickly say Alien Christmas is starting November 30th on Netflix. It's a cartoon movie for kids. Alien Christmas. That's it. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Melody, what are some things you're working on right now? Uh, so I actually got it's like I love hearing all of these updates. I miss acting so much. It makes me want to dive back in. I actually work behind the scenes now in public media for an economic news program. Um, so it's, yeah. it's got a little bit wow. of creativity. <laughs> yeah, so I do a little bit of voiceover for them as well because we're broadcast and on demand um, and video. So just a tiny bit of creativity, but I really miss acting. It's so great to hear that you all are still so proactive and you're just uh, so inspired. And how they how we get on the news? How the economic news? Are we screwed? <laughs> <laughs> well, we know we that. But where is, where is your show? Where can we hear your show? Uh, the show is actually so. If you if you hear NPR or Morning Edition, um, so it's the the show is called Marketplace. I think oh, you can hear with I I, I I really, oh, you know, always um, listen to that. They're NPR constantly, nonstop. Yes, yeah. So um, it's they have a really amazing mission to try to just um, raise the economic intelligence of the country as well as younger people, um, so that we can make better decisions, hopefully going forward as a country. Yeah. So, exactly. so really uh, that's that. great. Yeah, that's awesome. very important. It's yeah. strange. It's like a double life because. Um, you know, in space, astronomy was introduced in, I think, 1998. And um, just now, my action figure is available for pre-order. So it's like, <laughs> I have this very normal behind the scenes life. And then there's this whole other thing churning out there. So that's a good, that's a good economic news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Yeah. Paul Freeman, what are some things you're working on right now? Uh, I'm not working on much at the moment, except I'm writing a, a book about jazz, which is a, one of my great passions. Mm -hmm. um, I but I just finished, we just finished the third and final season of uh, Absentia, which is a series I've been doing on Amazon Prime for the last three years. Just got that in before the, epi epi the pandemic started in December, mm -hmm. we finished. In oh, what's it, Paul, what's the name of that? Absentia. And... Um, Next year, um, there's a series starting um, over here, a TV series called Murder in Provence. You might be in this, Diane, if you're there. Oh, my God, I'd love Murder it. Murder in Provence, it sounds good, doesn't it? Yes, it does. You're right. <laughs> so that, that, that absentia is going on now on Amazon Prime, and uh, that's it. Absolutely. Before we go, we want to shout out some of our favorite fan groups. Um, 5D Blogger Podcast, at Limos Designs, at Power Ranger Brazil, at Power Rangers HQ, at Tokyo V Joe, at Power Rangers Universe, at The Violet Rangers, at The Crystal Ranger, at Superpower Sentai Rangers, at Rangers Girls, and also at The Ranger Project LATM. Um, another thing we definitely want to shout out to one of our top villains. We've mentioned him on this this panel a couple of times, Mr. Robert Axelrod. He definitely is missed. I got to meet him once um, in Alabama at a convention, and he was just such a joy to be around and to and, you know, to just like this is Lord Zed. And at first I was, shy, I was like, oh, my God, that's Lord Zed. Nightmares, nightmares, nightmares. So and, so we just want to definitely shout him out. And one thank everybody that's been watching. We got people from Argentina, Mexico, Canada, the UK, Pennsylvania, Oregon, Oklahoma City, um, Mexico, again, Portland, San Jose, Hawaii, Kentucky, Mississippi, North Carolina, Illinois, California, and my home state of Alabama and Power Rangers fans everywhere. We want to thank all of you guys for being here with us. Thank you for giving the opportunity to moderate and we'll see you guys later. Hopefully conventions will come back soon and we can see you guys in person. Thank Yay, you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. All right, y'all. Bye. 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 Stay safe, everyone. Bye. Nice seeing you all. Bye. 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 Thank you. A pleasure. This is John Glover, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe.
Lionel Luther recommends it. Ah, have some fun. Follow your fandom.